Yash, it's so great to have you here. Your lighting is excellent, by the way. Super fun. Are you a streamer and YouTuber as well? Look at you. Come on. I, I, I had done quite a lot of these things. Like in the past, I was doing a lot of these things. Right now, uh, I'm traveling, traveling quite a bit. So didn't don't get enough chances to do a lot of streams. I've been planning to do some. So that's why I reset up the whole thing. So yeah. Uh, actually, I set up the camera position today itself, so it's uh, something different I was trying out. I really like it. And you play guitar, <laughs> I'm seeing, from your from your acoustic in the back? Yeah, yeah. I, I am kind of a musician on the side as well, but uh, mainly an uh, engineer by profession, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to always know a little bit and have other passions, right? I, you know, mm -hmm. Especially if you're a musician and you're a developer, I feel like those overlap pretty well because you're able to think in ways that right that maybe are are complex that in creative ways so i'd love to hear more about that but before we mm -hmm. do tell me a little bit yeah. about you yash like where are you based mm -hmm. how did you get into this field what's a little bit of your story before we jump in sure sure so hello everyone i'm yash uh i handle developer relations at web3 auth a web3 authentication company like what you can see as a Google login or something that authenticates you, similar to that. Web3 or does that for you in the Web3 world. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, but about me, uh, I got into this role around two and a half years ago. Uh, so I did set up the whole developer relations department uh, into this company. And I had been doing a lot of these developer relations particular stuff, like building a community of people and developers who are passionate about a particular product, helping them foster, helping them grow together with the company. And that is the main role of developer relations in general. And I've been doing that for a while. I was working with a lot of companies like Rocket Chat, Major League, hacking and i've been uh here in powder fly for a couple of summits so maybe a few people might uh, recognize me for the, from there but yeah that's basically that about me awesome well welcome back thank you so much for for uh participating with us again today yeah, yeah. so where are you based now so i'm currently based that. out of india mm -hmm. uh it's like i hop on uh, between singapore india and different events like uh, wherever I have to go. Web3 World is like every single month is a conference and every single person is heading towards there. So uh, next month I'll be in somewhere else. Like uh, I guess I'll be in the US next month. So yeah. Oh, amazing. <laughs> well, sounds like a pretty fun life. That's great. I love this for you. It's it's tiring as well. Like quite a bit tiring because uh, mm. you have to literally work uh, attending the event. And uh, in the evening you have to work towards like your own company and your own uh, different things you have to do. But it, it's fun as well, for sure. Like there are a lot of different things happening in Web3. So it's definitely fun. Yeah. And your the time changes must be wild too, right? What time is it yeah. for you right now? So right now it's uh, 8.30 p.m. for me. So yeah, what about you? 8 a.m. <laughs> oh, okay. Just now for the side of the board. Exactly. <laughs> I'm on the West Coast of uh, the States. I'm in California Makes right sense. now. So we are. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there next week. I'll just see this particular uh, time shift. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, good luck with the jet lag. So <laughs> in addition to time change challenges, what are some what are some unique challenges and opportunities that, that you see for developers in, in the Web3 space? So as a developer in the Web3 space, the first thing, excuse me, uh, one has to see that this particular sector is quite growing. Like uh, if you see any other regular space, uh, like general web development or something, when it comes to emerging technologies like Web3 or even AI or something like that, things are changing so rapidly that you have to make sure you are keeping yourself updated. If for one month you are not updated with the latest tech, what's going on, what's floating around, you might become outdated and you will have to like recap the whole thing. Yeah. So this is one of the biggest challenges as a Web3 developer, just anybody who is trying to break into the space or just working in the space as well. They have to keep themselves very updated. The second thing is like, there's so many things floating around you have to concentrate on something particularly and you mm -hmm. have to grow alongside that. So that's another challenge, I will say. But the uh, opportunity, of course, exists uh, when it's challenging, when it's ever growing, you can grow very well as well. You can like literally grow many folds in maybe a couple of years. I've seen a lot of people grow and actually conquer something over there. So I feel when you come into these new emerging tech, 
it's it's always a challenge it's always fun to do that but it's a huge huge opportunity if you try to do that as well yeah i really hear you with the challenges of if you're not keeping up with anything you can be you know left in the dust right cuz every exactly. week with you know i'm less plugged into the web uh the web3 space and more adjacent to it with ai and whatnot and every week it's like if you're building something maybe it's coming out the next week right when you finish it like i'm launching and it's like yep. oh, open ai or whatever just released the, that but they had exactly. millions of dollars behind them to do it <laughs> <laughs> billions probably right so what is the that good part like? about is... web3 here is that yeah there's no central place like the good so the concept of web3 is decentralization right so right. when it comes to web3 the good part here is that when for ai anything that basically google unrolls or maybe a open ai or someone else is like just does it with a lot of money what will happen is they will be just keeping the lead over there and everyone else will be vanished in web3 it's not exactly the case okay definitely there are big players but it's all community driven it's from the bottom mm. up so mm -hmm. you know well in advance what's actually going to come out as a general uh, like ecosystem improvement so when it comes to like the ethereum ecosystem they are like eip they are proposals to for improvement by the community mm. right so you actually know where the trend is going on and you can actually hit on the correct trend and you can grow alongside the trend as well and you can shift your direction pretty well so definitely there are changes and sudden changes and there might be a chance that you will be totally obsolete and there are different companies that become one but the good part is that you are seeing that trend from the bottom up so that helps quite a lot over here yeah that's that's really fascinating well that, that's encouraging for anyone maybe getting into the space <laughs> it's like definitely because i can imagine with with some of the the big players out there could be like well what's even the point right like if they're just gonna mm -hmm. scoop up someone else's idea or something like that but it's really mm -hmm. cool to hear about being a part of it from the ground up that it's not quite possible for them to do that because they're not they're actually too big to play in that way exactly like they have those issues particularly about secrecy and all i will say uh so that particularly is something what web3 is going to tackle and it's trying to tackle for a long time as well just a general like as i mentioned decentralization a general way of getting people getting the power to do something over the tech mm. right not the other way around directly yeah so can you talk to me a bit about any specific instances where developer relations played a key role in overcoming perhaps a cultural barrier within web3 in a web3 project so there are multiple things basically i will say so first of all in terms of cultural barriers i will say web3 is extremely dominant in the west for sure and when it comes to the asian communities they picked up pretty well around the time of like 2020 there were a lot of people from the asian communities like literally indulging into it and when it's about computation there's a norm that asians are better at maths sometimes they say so that particular norm came in very handy when it came uh, when it came to blockchain technology in general because there was a lot of empowering of the asian communities mm. when it came to the african communities right now things are actually growing up for them a lot of different people are focusing on that so when it comes to developer relations in general what's the role of developer relations i will say the role is to actually build inclusive communities everywhere right and have them be a part of this ecosystem for example i will say right now in nigeria if i talk about solana community in web3 particularly they are doing such a great job that the top downloaded app in their app store is currently the wallets of solana and that is very fascinating for everybody because this particular area this particular whole cultural segment i will say has been not into that extreme technology right like you cannot see a lot of tech actually driven by the government or by the general authorities as well in these areas but mm -hmm. because of these efforts by developer relations by these companies directly you can actually see people are growing into the next generation of the technology directly skipping the first and second 
kind of basing, basics of the technology, I would say, right? So in that sense, you can see a huge role, a cultural barrier has been actually broken because of the connected world, because of people actually focusing on these communities directly. That's really fascinating. So there's this opportunity now in different parts of the world, like you said, it, it's been dominated by the West for a while, but now we're seeing these really huge booms in different parts of the world. So what do you expect with is, or what have you seen that's particularly impactful um, that Web3 has been able to do it as far as community goes compared to traditional tech spaces, which have been, I would say, you know, especially in the West, heavily dominated by cis white men, you know, in Silicon Valley. What is that difference that you're seeing in the Web3 space? So the huge thing over here is that, as I mentioned, there are like multiple improvement proposals in the community. If I talk about the Ethereum ecosystem, similarly, if I talk about the Bitcoin ecosystem, Bitcoin improvement proposals, similarly, there are other ecosystems as well. And similar improvement pro uh, proposals are there everywhere, right? So you can see a trend that the, like it, the development over here goes from the bottom up. There's somebody, any random person in the community, whoever they are, can propose a thing. And if other people like, they can vote on it and there can be debates on it, whether this should be there or not. And similarly, it can move forward or somebody else can come over with a new idea on top of that. So you can see this particular way of developing is driven by the community, right? When it com mm -hmm. comes to Web2 focused companies, developer relations is outward. You have developed something. For example, OpenAI has developed something. Now their developer relations focus will be to promote it to the outer world, right? To get more people actually build on top of OpenAI's latest uh, chat GPT-40, for example, right? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to uh, like the Web3 ecosystem, now these improvement proposals are going on. Somebody else has proposed it. Developer relations will be inward. It will be a hybrid approach, to be honest, because you have to, uh, again, promote the company's things, but it will be inward. It will be from the community. Okay, this is particularly trending in the community. How can we actually make something out of it? Mm. So you can see by default, it's empowering the ground up. By default, it's empowering the masses and not the actual people who make the decisions on top. Right? So that's how yeah. it is. Yeah. How is the feedback given and received in the community to catch those waves and develop the things that you see, oh, this is what the community wants. How is that understood and received? So that depends uh, from different communities. So there are particular communication channels. If you see the most common communication channels are like Discord uh, or maybe some particular forum that particular thing has, like company has created, or even Twitter. There are a lot of things trending on Twitter for, from time to time. The mm. base of Web3 uh, are like three places. First is Twitter. Second is Telegram. Third is the Discord uh, channels of these uh, these particular uh, communities. And then mm. when it comes to the proposals and everything and where the whole discussions happen, there are particular sites hosted by these particular communities in general. And there you can actually just go and write your ideas, talk to people, propose it forward. So that's how it's generally done. Mm, interesting. Yeah. So I also love that you're, you call it Twitter. <laughs> You're like, it's still. Uh, just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Twitter. I, I don't like the X. X. Okay, come on. It's 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 kind of dumb, I feel. But yeah. yeah it's a marketing <laughs> move for sure. It's a flex. <laughs> someone. I have the domain. I just capture it. It's like that. <laughs> totally. Oh, I'm such a domain hoarder. Anytime I have a good idea, I'm like, oh, I'm buying it. You know? <laughs> Uh, is it, 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 it? Does it still work? Because I thought it was a huge thing back in the days. Right now, like domain, like buying and holding and selling, is it actually a still thing? I don't think it's what it, it definitely wasn't what it used to be. But I was never in the one in the space of like, oh, I'm going to buy it and resell it. That would probably would have been smart. I'm just like, oh, I'll buy it and use it someday. And I use maybe one in 10 of them, you know? Uh, I get you. I get you. Like uh, so any day I, an idea pops up in my head. Okay. This might be a good name for this particular idea. I just get the domain and never build it. Yep. <laughs> okay. You're my people. We see each other here now. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Yeah. So what do you see? How do you, uh, so speaking of developer relations, 
Um, how do you see developer relation professionals engage more in participation with engaging in tech like blockchain and AI? Do you see an excitement that's different than other tech that's out there? When it comes to emerging tech, uh, I feel developer relations is the most exciting field over there. Okay. So why I think so is like, for example, there's the good old cloud, right? The cloud tech, right? Uh, a developer relations focus will be to get more enterprise customers, I will say, or get more, if, if they are actually growing the community, they will try to teach these concepts uh, to the people who are like, maybe through certifications or maybe the students who are like trying to get into this field, try to break into cloud. When it comes to AI or maybe blockchain or any emerging tech, for example, your job becomes very interesting. You have to literally read through the latest developments that are going on literally every single week. Mm -hmm. Then you have to create content on top of it so that your community is engaged, right? Mm -hmm. If you are building something new, you have to make like a total narrative around it and float the narrative around the community and make sure it actually sticks. Otherwise, if, if it does not stick, it's not going to float around because when it comes to emerging tech, something that sticks with the community always moves forward much in a much faster pace as something that might be some like like for example if i talk about why chat gpt became a thing right uh if i talk about ai because you might be more uh like directly uh following that gpt3 was there already right as a developer tool and nobody was talking heavily about it hmm. somebody came over and come came up with the idea let's make a chatbot out of it and it just blew up right right Literally right. blew up overnight. Yeah. So this is like the narrative you have to create. Uh, something that actually makes uh, like everybody resonate with it. Mm -hmm. Right? Something like that. Something like that are the things that developer relations a lot of time figure out. So especially when it comes to crypto uh, and Web3 tech, it's all community driven as I mentioned earlier. So your job is to engage with these degens who are just uh, like trading some random meme coin at some time. Mm. You have to capture those audience as well. And that is really fun. So Web3 in general and developer relations particularly is a really cool job inside of Web3. Yeah. Because with ChatGBT is a great example. They put a chatbot wrapper on it and then it became accessible to a wider audience. And I think that Yep. is why so many people are like, oh my gosh, I can see it. I understand it. I can interact with it. Are there other examples that you've perhaps worked on or witnessed that there was that switch? You're like, oh, we have this thing. And then you added that one little secret sauce bit and then boom, everyone's talking about it. Are there other examples of that that you find um, mm -hmm. in the Web3 space? So, that Yeah. I, I can talk about particular developer focused things. I'm not yeah. sure if I, it might resonate with general people. I can think about GitHub, for example. Yep. Mm -hmm. So Git always used to exist, right? Uh, there are places you need, you always used to host your repositories and everything. Uh, if I talk about that and making of GitHub a ba basic social media kind of a platform on top of it which became a hub for the developers to go, go over there and actually contribute to random open source projects. And it was a huge thing in general, I will say, right? If I talk about Web3 specific things, NFT is a great example over here. So NFTs blew up randomly, right? Overnight uh, at times, like different paintings are being sold as tokens. Tokens used to exist for a long time and non-fungible token, what NFT is, used to exist for a long time as well. But overnight, somebody came up with an idea, okay, let's associate it with paintings or something and just uh, reward the creators of the paintings in general, right? It blew up, right? Similarly, there are other things that are coming over. For example, a very interesting thing right now is trending is called RWA or real world assets. So they are basically tying up uh, different coins with some real world asset, like maybe a piece of land, or maybe a piece of cattle, for example, right? Something or the other that exists in the real world, but cannot be commoditized in the general market are being right. added 
through coins or are being traded through coins. And these are the some things that are really trending and they're really building on top of that as well. So mm-hmm. this might be the next thing that might similarly take a boom like NFTs. People are expecting that. Let's see what happens over there. Yeah, there was, there's, I've heard about some of these too recently. There was, so they bought a really expensive painting, right? Collectively with coins. And so everyone mm-hmm. owns a little bit of piece of the painting, but it's like 10,000 people own this much of the painting as opposed to one super rich person buying it with cash. Exactly. And then maybe in the future, some other uh, community people like wants to buy it over, wants to buy just a small portion of it. They can actually trade that further, right? So they can actually make money on top of it. So it's mm-hmm. it's not just buying that particular thing. It's it's about maybe making money out of it in, uh, as well sometime. So it, right. it's it's quite speculative in uh, that way you can think about it. But that's crypto in general, not just Web3. Right. What are some common misconceptions about developer relations in Web3 and how do you address them? One interesting uh, thing is developer relations folks just travel around the world. <laughs> so uh, like i will say when it comes to developer relations there are a lot of misconceptions in the way that uh, maybe uh, developer relations folks uh, are not technical enough sometimes mm. right uh, people want to get into developer relations because it seems pretty cool and it's it's like you're interacting with a lot of people you are uh, like talking like in podcast and things like that you're traveling uh, you are making content with general uh, generally is like you are visible to a lot of people, right? So it, it becomes a bit cooler in that way. Yeah. But when you don't have the basic information or you don't, you are not a developer first, you cannot be a developer relations, devrel first, right? So you have to understand the tech from the depth. If you are not understand the tech from the depth, you cannot talk about it because somebody will come over and ask you some question and you'll be like, sorry, I don't know about it. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> that does not work exactly. Okay. When when it comes to like very extremely high things, when which extremely senior engineers know about, then that's a different case altogether. But when it comes to what you are talking about, if you don't know that enough, then uh, technically you're not doing a good job as a developer relations person. So that is one of the biggest misconceptions I will try to talk about. Uh, so yeah. yeah. Would did you start as a developer first before moving into developer relationships? And is that a trend that you see with other folks in your field? So most of the uh, good people I know in developer relations actually have started like that. For example, for me, I was an open source developer. I used to contribute a lot in different projects during my college times as well. After that, I actually had a job focused on being a software engineer before I transitioned in the community stuff. So I had this journey. I've seen other people have this, this uh, similar journey as well. Uh, there are a few people who are self-taught uh, and that's really great as well because it's all about knowing. It's not about being a developer or being in that job road first. It's all about actually knowing what you're talking about. So I've seen those people as well over there and they're doing pretty great as well. Mm, yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah. So we just have a couple minutes left. Okay. What advice would you give to someone from an underrepresented community looking to break into developer, ration, re, developer relations in the Web3 space? When it comes to the Web3 space, I feel it's one of the most welcoming spaces I've been mm. into. Mm. So if, if you're trying to be here, just try to see what is what is the current thing people are talking about on Twitter. Because first of all, you have to capture that, right? But uh, before you can understand, it's a lot of different terms and you'll be just lost in terms. So you have to learn from the basics. So make sure you read through the blogs, read through the different things and actually grasp the knowledge because everything is available on Google in general, I will say. So read through it and then see the latest things, what are there Mm -hmm. and create content about it because developer relations by default people are excited by your content. If you can create some content and build a community of yourself, you will be one of the biggest developer relations folks that are are present because everybody has a community around them by themselves. Mm. After that, after that, it becomes like the company's community and your focus shifts. Mm. But but if you can create your own, that will be a great job yourself. I love that. 
if you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice before you jumped into the Web3 space, what mm-hmm. would it be? My first advice would be I should have done it earlier. I could have made <laughs> some more money, I will say. <laughs> But but uh, if, if uh, generally I will say about my advice to anybody and like uh, not not like actually reflecting on back over here, uh, I will say I should have focused more on my self branding in Web three because I did a lot of that in Web two world when I was a Web two like developer relations person. I could have done a lot of that, and now I'm focusing on that when it comes to Web three. So mm. I should have started out of that uh, earlier. And that's what I recommended for somebody who is starting off as well. Try to make your personal community. What's your hot take on developing your own uh, presentation? <laughs> presentation in the sense like... Uh, like developing like your own style and connecting with something that feels true to you, but also connects with an audience. Like, how have you found that? So... It's it's all hit and trial, to be honest, for me, right. I will say, first of all, right? Uh, the first thing I will say is I'll just try and make something and I'll see what people actually comment on that. If people like it, definitely I have to double down on that. For example, you are seeing this setup and the way I'm talking right now, this has developed over the years, right? So at first, my first thing was maybe just a, a laptop webcam and just me talking about some things where uh, my English was not even that good. So that's that's how it starts uh it's all about hit and trial just being present just knowing what you're talking about the confidence is very important and rest it's it's all about uh, it's the time that actually does everything for you awesome yash this was so fantastic thank you so much for making the time today at 8 30 p.m in the evening i appreciate you Please come back again. It's always a pleasure to have you here. I'm so glad I got to be the one to talk to you today. Thank you so much for making the time. Definitely. Thank you, Hunter. Thanks for having me.